let us rise up to pray. Let's rise up to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you very much this time that you have decided to bring us together this time of Easter. Thank you. Bless your name. We adore your name for great and mighty things you have done. You are doing. You will still do even today and in the nearest future. In the life of this youth, Father, accept our praises in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, you have brought them together today to give them something, something that will remain indelible in their heart and in their lives. Father, I pray each and every one of them give us teachable art today, receptive art today, and let your word profit them in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. You are all welcome to this program. In Jesus' name. Uh, the theme of this program is um, my set time has come. And um, before that set time can come, something must be done. And that which must be done will be done in your life, even this day in Jesus' name. And what is that? Knowing God Almighty. Because it is the only one. He is the only one that can give you fulfillment in life. If um, Abraham Lincoln, he said, without the assistance of God, I cannot succeed. With his assistance, I cannot fail. You will not fail in Jesus' name. So I want to talk to us quickly on my set time to succeed has come. My set time to succeed has come. If I may ask, your own set time, when will it come? So shall it be. Let's quickly look at the book of Jeremiah. As youth, the Lord has a lot of things for us. In fact, youth is that group of people paramount in the heart of our God Almighty. That is why in Jeremiah 29, Jeremiah 29 verse 11, he's saying, he said, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thought of what? Peace and not of evil to give you what? What's your expected end? Eh? As students, as singles, what's your expected end? Success. Success and my prayer today is that that success, the Lord will give unto you in Jesus' name. In, uh, in third John, there is another confirmation there. In third John, third John chapter, third John verse two, third John has only one verse. Verse two, he said, "Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul what prospereth." You are going to prosper in life in Jesus' name. Success is an expression which connotes achievement. Achievement in all the areas of your life. Academically, maritally, and so on and so forth. And in every man, there is that innate progress to succeed. There is nobody that will never expect success in his life. God has not created the one to be a failure. That is one thing we need to know with God Almighty. He has never and will never create any man to be a failure. Failure comes as a result of our own choice. But my prayer is you will not choose failure in your life in Jesus' name. So the very purpose of God is to give every youth an expected end, which is, which is success, all round success in your life. The desire of God is for every youth to do what? To prosper beyond imagination. 
So if you don't know today the purpose of God, the desire of God for your life as a youth is for you to prosper beyond imagination. Not only that, to be the head, head and not the tail. Not only that, to attain great height and reign at where? At the top. That will be your portion. I say that will be your portion. Now, let me tell you reasons why you must succeed. Why you must succeed. Where we have read in Jeremiah 29, 11, he said, God Almighty is telling you there. He said, my thought towards you is that you should have peace, not evil, so that your expected end, which is success, can be given unto you. And let's look at it. Why must you succeed in life? Your parents, this church, the church of God Almighty, the country as a whole, and the world in general, they are waiting to see you succeed. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? The whole world, your parents, the church, they are expecting, they are waiting to see you succeed in life. Why? Why is God interested in your success? Because mediocrity does not show the glory of God. When you have been created to be on top and you are at the bottom, God cannot be happy. It's like uh, when one of our sisters said, as parents, when it is time for you to walk, to crawl as a child, the child is not crawling. It's time to walk, it's not walking. It's time to talk, it's not talking. Will the parents be happy? He will not be happy. So also God will not be happy to see you at the bottom of the ladder. My prayer is you will always be on top. Then, just like I've said, it is the will of God for you to succeed. Then, Another reason why you must succeed is that there is the seed of success planted by God in every youth. Look at Psalm 139. In every youth, if you don't know today, you must know that that seed of success is even planted in you in Psalm 139. Psalm 139, verse 14. It says, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Many opportunities are waiting for successful people. That's another reason. Many opportunities are what? Waiting for successful people. Academically, if you succeed, it's before now that uh, the economy is now uh, bad. In those days, at your graduation, as a young graduate, there are captains from companies that they will line up looking for first class honor, second class upper, second class lower, even third class. With car waiting, accommodation waiting. They want to employ you. And that is why, you see, there are many opportunities waiting for successful youth. And if the youth is not, if it's a failure, there won't be job opportunity for that individual. But today, even though as hard as the country is, when it is your own time, that is after you might have finished your education, you are looking for a job, it will not be hard for you in Jesus' name. The nation is seriously in need of successful people to occupy great positions. Why? Because as youth, you are still agile. You can jump up and down. And if you look at adverts today, vacancy, vacancy, what will you see there? You will see the requirement. Each bracket, maybe between 25 and 35. Why? Because they need, they need able-bodied youth that will promote their companies. Even in government parastatus, the same thing. Look at that age bracket. That is youth age bracket. So, the nation seriously needs you. And you will not disappoint this country. I say you will not disappoint this country. 
then for you to be a channel of blessing to your generation, you must be what? You must be successful. Even to your parents, to your family, to, 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 to your state, to your, to, to your country, you must be successful. And I pray you will be successful. You will be successful in Jesus' name. But in the process of struggling to be, to be successful, there are certain things you must take care of. We can call them pitfalls. What do I call it? Pitfalls to avoid. So that you, once you fall into it, you can't come out. And once you can't come out, success is gone. The expectation of your parents, of, of, of the country, of people, dashed. So if you can avoid these pitfalls, you discover that it shall be well with you. And it shall be well with you in Jesus' name. In uh, Proverbs, let's quickly look at the book of Proverbs, chapter, Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6, verse, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6. You see? Pitfalls. To avoid. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider our ways and be wise. Which having no guard, overseer or ruler, that's ant, ant that are walking on the ground. They have no guide, they have no overseer, they have no ruler. Provided our meat in the summer and gathered our food in the harvest. How long will thou sleep, O sluggard? When will thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an army armed man. I think you understand that passage. Do you? Yes. Slugger. We say slugger. We say slugger. You will not be one of them in Jesus' name. I say you will not be a slugger in Jesus' name. Now, let's look at from where we have read. Number one thing is procrastination. You know, a slugger. Oh, don't worry. Let me sleep a bit. I will do it tomorrow. I will do it next tomorrow. I will do it until... See, go, look at ant. When it is time for them to gather, they will, you will see them crawling up and down, picking crumbs of bread, whatever they can find. They will gather everything together, keep them. Why are they doing that? So that when it is rainy season, they won't be able to go out. They are going out will be risky. Flood can sweep them away. But during that time, they will remain indoors. The food they have gathered during the dry season is what they will be living upon. So, you must avoid. Now, if you write down pitfall vertically, write it down. Pitfall vertically. P there is procrastination. That's deliberately postponing what is to be done now till another time. You are just postponing. I won't do it now. I will do it tomorrow. I will do it now. I will do it tomorrow. You want to succeed in life? When it is time to read, read. When it is time to burn candle, burn candle. Don't say the time is still there. P, procrastination. I there is idleness. That is, idleness leads to sin. Many youth have, have had their future destroyed as a result of being idle. Many have gone into drugs, arm robbery, and other social vices. An idle mind is what? Devil's workshop. That is why many youth, idle ones, they have gone into sin. And no sinners shall do what? Sinners will see the kingdom of God. Eh? No sinners will see the kingdom of God. So, P there, procrastination. I there, idleness. You must avoid idleness as you are avoiding a plague. T there is tendency to give up too soon. Oh, I failed my work last, last, uh, last year. That's the bye bye to academics. I'm no longer interested. I won't read again. Ah, tendency to give up too soon. Don't give up your goals. No order can be too high for a youth with determination. If you are so determined, if you fail, what's there? Go and repeat. And when you repeat, you will make it. Then the journey continues. There is nothing bad 
in falling down. What is bad is when you fall down and you remain there. But when you fall, what must you do? You get up again. Journey continues. So P, procrastination. I, idleness. T, tendency to give up too soon. F, fear and foolishness. Fear and foolishness. You must avoid the fear of failure. And foolishness of idleness. Some people, they will tell you, ah, I, don't, I can't do it all because they are, they are saying many people, they are failing this thing. So therefore, that fear. If you don't fall, how will you rise? How will you rise if you don't fall? You won't rise, but you will not fall. And if you fall, it's not a cause. If you fall as a result of your carelessness, foolishness, should you remain there? No, jump. I did jump. This is the third time. Look for alternatives. There shouldn't be fear. If you are doing jump, you want to go direct. Jump is not forthcoming to jump you. What do you do? Go through polytech polytechnics and some other institutions that are offering advanced, uh, um, advanced uh, levels. Have your good grade, then you cross over to university with direct entry. But if you didn't fall, you wouldn't know there is another way of getting to university. So that is F, fear and foolish. You must avoid it like anything. A, there, association with the ungodly. In fact, the scripture says, what? Don't unequally yoke together with unbelievers. So association with the ungodly, you must avoid it. Why? Because evil communication corrupts good manners. Avoid bad friends and evil influence. As youth, your heart is tender, can, flexible. And that is why you need to be very, very careful with the association with the people you are, you are keeping as friends. L, their lack of care for essential things. Some things are very essential, no matter how little they appear. So little things matter in, in, in your bid to succeed in life. Could you believe that respect for elders matters? But if you are so insulted, no respect for elders, no disobedience is there, which you can consider as little things. If, if you are so rude to elders today, tomorrow it, it, it is possible to meet them there when you will be in need of their assistance. Now, an elderly man that you have insulted. How will he help you? These are the little, little things that we need to avoid in our lives. L, that's another, that's L. The first one is lack of care for essential things. Um, uh, the second L, laziness. A lazy person will always come to poverty. Look at it. Verse 11 of Proverbs 6. Verse 11 says, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. When somebody is being attacked by somebody that is harmed, what will happen? It will crush that individual. So when you are lazy, when poverty will come, it will just crush you into pieces. That is why we need to be up and doing. Yes, sinful alternatives. The tendency, that's, the, that, that's uh, the, la, the, uh, the last um, S there. That's pitfalls. S, sinful alternatives. That is the tendency in many youth is to choose the shortest, easiest way to succeed. Yahoo, yahoo. They get involved in examination malpractices. What about cyber crimes today? Why? Because they want to get rich quickly. They want to ride jeep. They want to do this. They want to do that. Instead of them to sit down, read when they are supposed to read. To burn candle when they are supposed to burn candle. I pray that in your bid to succeed in life. Because even all these Yahoo, Yahoo boys, they will tell you uh, they are successful. They measure their own success by what they are able to acquire through any means. Can't you see? I have my bungalow somewhere over there. 
Can't you see? Look at my Jeep. Look at my vehicle. Can't you see? Come, come into my house. Come and see the electronic gadget I have there. Then when you enter as a youth, yeah. at what age? Look at what he has acquired. You want to copy. That is why you need to take care. Don't fall into any of those pitfalls and you will not fall in Jesus' name. Now, when you avoid all these pitfalls, you must develop an attitude within yourself. What is that attitude? Let's look at Philippians chapter 4. That attitude. As, as a youth that you must develop if you want to succeed in life. In um, Philippians, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. says, I can do all things through Christ, which what? Strengthened me. Meaning that just like uh, Abraham Lincoln said, just where I read earlier, I said, without the assistance of God, I cannot succeed. With his assistance, I cannot fail. Now, join it with Philippians 4, 13. See, I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. That is to tell you that Jesus Christ must not depart from your life. Once you shun, are we all Christians? Are we Christians? Write it down, Christian. Write it down, Christian. Write it down. Have you written it? Have you? Count. How many letter words do we have there? How many letter words? Nine. Count the first six. What is that? Christ. What is remaining? I A N. That is you. Christian. Christ plus me. Christian. Now, just like I said, if you don't develop that attitude of I can, not by my effort, not by my wisdom, but by the assistance of Jesus Christ Almighty, if you don't develop that attitude, there's no way you will succeed. So, if you don't develop it, it means you are cutting Christ away from you. And I-A-N, it means once Christ is off your life, you are now becoming I am nothing. You will not be nothing in Jesus' name. Uh, youth, I say you will not be nothing in Jesus' name. Rather, you will be something in Jesus' name. So, he um, said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. As a man thinks in his heart, so he is. As you th if you think you will be on top, so will it be. If you think I will succeed in life, you will, you will, you will, you will do everything possible to make sure that you are, uh, so shall it be. I will gain admission after my uh, uh, secondary school education. In fact, I don't want to miss jam. I want to do it once. So shall it be by your confession. It shall be done unto you. So men often conquer difficulty because they think they can. That's why I say you must develop that, that attitude of I can. Not I can't. I can. When you develop it, you will con even difficult, difficult situations you will conquer them. And there is nothing that anyone wants to do that cannot be done when that attitude of I can is there. Then, never impose any limit upon your life. Never in your life you, you impose limit. I remember when I was in secondary school. The person I was staying with decided to send me to school. And uh, I believe I want to read. I believe I don't want to be a pushover in life. Then my people came. Say, what are you doing here? I was informed too that time. This person you are staying with is not our relations. And do you think he will send you to school? You better come, go and learn uh, furniture. We, we, within two, three months or so, you will, you, will be, you will have started gathering something for yourself. Mark you, if you want to read, 
in order to succeed in life, you must reach university. Ah, this is a mountain. Who will send me? Who will send you? Do you have anybody that will send? But because that, even as young as I was, because that attitude was there, that I want to read, and I can. Since I'm not on my own, Jesus is by my side. Jesus uh, 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 was my guard, and is still my guard. I can, I can. So whatever your situation is, you have no excuse for failure. History shows we have outstanding examples of people with their situation, pitiable situation, pitiable conditions. They still became something in life. Look at uh, Thomas Edison, youth. I mean, you, you will have learned about him in the course of your uh, uh, study in the school. Thomas Edison, could you believe he was sent home from school by his teacher? He says he's a stupid boy. He, he, he cannot think. He's a dullard. He was sent home from school. But at the, because of that attitude of I can, he invented, he's the one that invented electric bulb today. Can you believe that? Somebody that was like, you can term as a dropout. What about Abraham Lincoln? This is a man that he never accepted no for an answer in his life. You want to know him? He's the one that said, without the assistance of God, I cannot succeed. But with, 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 with his assistance, I cannot fail. Look at his history. In 1831, he entered into a business, he failed. After failure in business, two times. He failed in business, later he decided to join politics. And uh, uh, in 1832, 1832, he failed. He, he, he was not elected in 1832 as what? As a legislature. Legislator. He failed. He looked, what can I do again? He went back to business. That's in 1834. He entered into business again, failure. Ah. In the process, the wife died. In fact, it, it would have been a big setback for this man. But because of that attitude of I can. You see, now, in uh, 1836, it was, it was, it, it, his nervous system broke down because of all these problems, challenges of life. Now, in 1838, what did he do? He went back to politics. He was defeated again in the election. He wanted to go to Congress in 18, 1843. He was defeated. 1846, defeated. 1848, defeated. In uh, 1855, he said, ah, if I can't go to this uh, House of Commons, let me go to Senate. He contested, he failed. Okay, I think, let me vie for vice presidency. He contested, it has, in 1856, he failed. He went back, okay, if I can't be a vice president, let me go back to Senate. At least that one is still a bit something. He contested in 1858. He failed. Ah. If you are the one, what will you do? What will you do? Ah. Could you believe in 1860? He contested for presidency and he won. Clap for Jesus. Praise the Lord. You see, now, tell me, can you see the, the number of years? And he was never discouraged, never perturbed, never, he continued. Because of that attitude, I can, I can, I can. How many times have you written jump that you are saying, I don't go to school again? And you are even fortunate, you have somebody that can send you to school, ready to pay your school fees. Now, that is Abraham. What about Fanny Crosby? Have you heard about that song that our sister uh, sang there? Is the one that wrote that song. Fanny Crosby, at tender age, she became blind. And in, in her lifetime, she wrote about 9,000 songs. Do you believe that? In fact, most of these songs we are singing today in our hymn books majority of them are, are, are written by her. So, I'm saying today, 
that whatever your situation is, don't give up. If, if you have been doubting, develop that attitude today. What is that attitude? I can. I can. I can succeed. I can succeed. I can succeed. I can make it. And you will make it in Jesus' name. In fact, our daddy in the Lord was talking about, what's the name? Vujisik. That's Nick. That has no limb. No hands. Who have ever seen that uh, video before? I was even, I read somewhere that is now married. Is married. Uh, no, if you see him, in fact, uh, you will be crying. You will be crying. But he did not consider his situation for anything. No self pity. He swims. He, ah. I will develop the attitude in my life. I can. And I will. And I will be on top in Jesus' name. I will be on top in Jesus' name. We will be on top in Jesus' name. So before we pray, um, I want to tell you today that you can succeed. All you need to do, just take note of this point. Number one, set personal goal for yourself. When I was in a secondary school, I used to say among my my friends that I say, ah, by the time I will be 40, I should have had my own company. And that was my goal, even in secondary school. And by the grace of God, I couldn't have it until I was about 43. But I was still, uh, you know, at least there was a goal which I was pursuing. But it, it's better than when you don't have anything. You are just going. Set a goal for yourself. Then, have workable timetable for effective time management. Timetable for effective management. Time management. Don't be careless with time. Any time you waste today, you can't recover it. Never, never in your life again. So now, another one is pursue your goal and work very hard. That goal, pursue it and work very hard. Then another one is motivate, inspire, and improve yourself daily. How many of us can operate computer today? Youth, computer. You are computer literate. How many of you? Ah. A time is coming when there, this jam, you will, you will, they will give you your, your, your computer, your laptop, and they ask you to do it. Even if you go to higher institution now, you see that it's you and your laptop you are working about. You need to improve with time. Not only that, you choose a successful person as your role model. Don't choose a failure as your role model in your life. Believe in yourself that you can succeed and excel. If that determination is not there, uh -uh. I, I, I was born to excel. I was born to succeed. Then you will succeed. Just determine. Then be disciplined. Determined. Diligent and desperate. You, des you are desperate with time. You are desperate with all these evils on the internet. You shun them. You are violent with them, with evil. Trust absolutely in God. Always aim at excellence. Determined to be an uncommon success. Somebody that is struggling to be in a third class, what will they come out with? In the higher institution. It's not aiming at first class or per distinction. If you are aiming at distinction, you couldn't get distinction. Uh -uh. You can have first class or per. If you can't get, you could come to first class lawyer. But if you are aiming at third class, by the time you drop, that will not be your portion. I say that will not be your portion. So never rest till you are counted the best. Not only that, you must be prepared to pay the price. What is the price of success? Hard work. Diligence. As youth, as a student, when you are supposed to be burning candle, you are laying about. 
you are just walking around, you must be ready to pay the price. Because of this, you can succeed and you will succeed. If you can take care of all this, you will succeed. I say you will succeed. But without the assistance of God, if you don't know that God as your personal Lord and Savior, He will not assist you. Even when you pray, your prayer will be an abomination unto Him. He will never answer. So that is why I want to encourage you today. If you have never known Him as your personal Lord and Savior, today, because your set time has come to know Him so that you can succeed, you must surrender. And you will succeed in Jesus' name. Shall we rise up to pray? Let you rise up. Let us pray. Commit yourself into the hand of the Lord. Have you known Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? That is the only way to success. So tell him, Lord, here am I. If you have not known him, tell him, I've come to you today. I want to know you as my personal Lord and Savior. I, commit, I confess my sins unto you. Have mercy upon me. Save me. Forgive me. Pardon me. Give me a new life today. So that truly I can be yours. So that whenever I pray unto you, you will answer me. And I will answer you. In Jesus name we pray. Father in the name of Jesus. We thank you very much. This morning we are grateful unto you. For this your children. Lord God Almighty, as many among them that have not known you, they have decided today to be your sons and your daughters. As they have decided today, Lord, accept them, write their names in your book in Jesus' name. Father, as they have determined to succeed in life, that success will not elude them in Jesus' name. Give them the grace to avoid all the enumerated pitfalls in their lives in Jesus' name. That spirit that attitude of I can let it come into their heart right now give them the grace and the enablement to be prepared to pay the price thank you because I know you have answered in Jesus name I pray in Jesus name we pray